Hello, and welcome to Bolas Abroad, the weekly video series where I play a non-Magic the Gathering game, and in today's video I'm going to be playing Civilization V. Uh, this is a... Uh, the rules for this game are tiny map, uh, level 7 out of 8 CPUs, and uh, I'm going to be playing as the Arabian Empire. That's one of my favorite empires in the game. Um, but yeah, we're going to dive in. Let me know what you think in the comments, uh, and I'll definitely be explaining my thoughts behind things. Um, so... Let's get into it. We're only going to be playing like the first 50 turns or so because those are the turns I find the most interesting and fun. And after that, the game gets a lot less fun for me. Also, if you play a full game, it would take forever. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so looking at this spot, we have good... Uh, this is a pretty strong st start. There's like two luxury goods here. There's some wheat for early development. We are next to a river, which is nice. Um, I am inclined to move like... I think this is just a, probably a fine settlement spot. So a lot of the time, I like to move onto a um, like hill, but if I move to this hill, then it looks like I'm going to be like kind of cutting myself off from a lot of potential resources that are over here. Uh, and this does look like there's an ocean over there, so I think this is a solid enough starting location and a nice spot to found a city. Also, it gives me access to a pretty strong uh, tile right off the bat. You do want to make sure you start off with a um production focus because when your city gains size it will uh, upgrade immediately it'll use the hammers from the production focus immediately like it'll like say start auto working this tile and it'll give you two hammers and then you can just change it in manual citizen select um, you don't want to explore too far with these guys because you don't want to get, to attack, get attacked early you want to be using your production stuff for scouts oh it was on a hill nice I totally didn't realize this I normally just see the hills by being like up here but it was on a hill it just had the food because it's um, had a forest on it, but yeah, that worked out really nicely. And I like to get pottery first so I can start working towards a shrine. Uh, though you also really don't want to make, you do want to start making mining before you get a lot of other things because getting, um, uh, being able to chop down these forests to like build calendars and being able to get wheat is quite nice. All that good stuff on the first turn of the game. Hmm. Okay, looks like a pretty good start here we have. Um, we don't have to buy any tiles because we have a really good expansion tile of this one. Uh, a lot of the time if you have like a really good tile that you want to get, like if say this deer was like just out of our range, we would maybe save up gold to buy it, but we don't have to do that. Currently just hanging out, getting a little bit of exploration. Ooh, city-state. We'll get into city-state interactions when we get to meet them. In single player, you do get a little bit of extra gold if you are the first one to meet them, so hopefully we are. Boom, we are. So we gave us 30 gold and 8 faith. So that's really nice for founding a pantheon, potentially. Not a pantheon, a... Uh... Yeah, I think it is pantheon, yeah. One thing you want to always do with city-states is pledge to protect. It doesn't really mean anything, but it does make your resting point 5 higher, which is nice. I do like kind of going for religion a lot of the time, especially with this civ, because you get bonuses to religion when you're having trade routes with other people. Uh, I like to get two scouts to start with, uh, because then you can start exploring multiple other directions. Um, this direction will probably go um, to the right, and then we'll go the other one, like, southwest. So, Yeah, we are on the coast. And now that we have a uh, scout, we can send our warrior back to, like, escort any... Ooh, we do have the first pantheon. Uh, let's see, there's one for silk, I'm pretty sure. You generally want to get the ones that... Uh, Will give you extra faith because then you can start getting uh, I mean no maybe the th I'm thinking of one with wine because then when you uh, yeah wine and incense this is silk so not really the same like all these sieves like God King is just a really good default one to go for um, but you do want to go for one that will provide you with a little bit of faith because then you can start getting a religion first um, so let's see, there's tundra without forest, no, deserts, copper, iron. Like, the other ones can definitely be situationally good. Like, if you have, like, three bananas around you, getting the one that gives you benefit from bananas is definitely really nice. But I think we're just going to go with God King this time. If this was incense, we would go with this one. Um, But, yeah. From plantations, nope, nope, nope. Yeah, this is the one Sun God um, sometimes is really good. But yeah, let's just go for God King. It's a very standard start. You can do this any game and it won't be too far wrong. Just gives you a lot of stuff. 
Oh dear. Always move your guys one at a, one square at a time for this exact reason. Say I was like right here and I like just said, oh, move to here. Then they would like walk into contact with the barbarians immediately instead of like waiting a little bit. You generally don't want to fight the barbarians early. It's just not going to end well for you. Just kind of want to avoid conflict. Okay, so there's nothing over that direction. That's like a archipelago it looks like. These guys are going to take the long route. production. Okay, now that I have a new citizen, every time you do that, you want to go and make sure you manually allocate them to focus on growth early on. Once you get to three citizens, where you start like thinking about building a uh, a settler, generally, because that's when you can have like pretty good, like you can have like a couple tiles to do stuff. I think in this spot, we're not super close. Generally, you can like steal workers from city states, which we'll probably try and do from Geneva at some point. Geneva, you can only do that once per game without getting major bit, like downsides, but uh, here, we don't want a monument because of the tradition tree will give us a monument automatically. So I think here we are just going to go for a a worker. We haven't... We're, we're about to finish our research on pottery, so after that we will we'll just put a turn into worker because we're going to build one eventually, but then after that we'll just invest in a shrine, or a granary. Probably a shrine and then granary after that. But that this will just give us a one turn of advancement towards our our goal. Pottery. So now we can go into our city. Change production. Build a shrine. We already have a um, pantheon. So I think now in this specific case we're going to get a granary. Though normally we would get a shrine so we could start building up our pantheon. But getting a granary is really nice because uh, it only not only gives us two food which helps our growth but also gives us an extra food from this um, wheat. So that's pretty nice. And getting food is the name of the game. We're going to want to get the one that lets us chop down a forest pretty early. Um, once we finish our worker, we'll want that. But for now, we can wait on that. Calendar we want to definitely get after we get mining. We can probably just get um, the writing at this point. Hmm. So in seven turns, we're going to want to start building a settler. We want to get, once we get to three citizens, generally, that's like my new, that's the thing I'm experimenting with after playing a bunch of games, um, is once you get to three, you kind of want to have the next spot you want to go sussed out, and then we'll just start, like, switch to production to get that going. So for now, and we'll also want to have happiness, like, enabled by that point, so we'll want to be able to get these plantations going. So let's focus on le that aspect, so we'll get mining. Because it will take a little bit of development to get uh, this silk plantation built. This guy's just going to go the long way. Ooh, we met another. Goodbye, Nebuchadnezzar. But, good to know that he's down there. This is why you want to get developing early, because you don't want to accidentally... This is a mountain range here. You don't want to accidentally like try to settle in the same spot, and you also want to be like quick to the gun, especially in player versus player. Where the people kind of don't start with massive advantages, you want to get be quick to the gun, to settling on good, the good tiles. Ooh, we found ruins. They're gonna get them first, but yeah. So there's an ocean up here, over here. It doesn't seem to be much. Probably just tundra. The tundra's kind of like just leading to nowhere usually. Nebuchadnezzar's probably down here somewhere. <coughs> So we're going to want to find a good spot to settle, maybe like right here, next to the mountain and the river, but we'll see. Once our scout gets a little more exploration going. Nice. This guy can stay close to home, but he's going to be escorting our settler. Whoa, we found a natural wonder. Output forked. Where is it? Right there. It's right there. So maybe we could settle somewhere near there. So if we settle our thing right here, we get hit, we get next to a mountain, which is good because then we can build an observatory later. We get next to a river. We're next to two luxury resources, and we're in range of the Grand Mesa. So this is going to be our initial spot that we want to settle. But we'll keep exploring for sure. Definitely going to keep exploring. But this is why you explore, so you can get your early stuff working out 
equipped with advanced weaponry. Nice. So this guy's going to start going right. This guy's going to keep going down and following the river. Okay, there's a barbarian encampment. Maybe there's something over here worth getting. But yeah, this is going to be a good settlement spot, I think. It's also in range of double, double wheat, so that's going to be great for growth. Once it gets a granary, and it's pretty easy to defend because it's next to a mountain range. Mm -hmm. Mining has been accomplished. May dot policy. A tradition is generally the one I go with. Liberty is more for like fast expansion if you're going to be building multiple cities. So if we look here, you kind of want to plan it out. Like if you're going to be building four or less cities, tradition is generally going to be better. Um, but and I don't think we're going to be building more than four here, especially on a tiny map. Um, we got one here. We got one here. We could probably build one like over here somewhere in the flatlands. Um, just as like a strategic one, like on this river maybe, just with near bananas in this oasis. But we're not going to be building like absurd amounts of cities. So we'll just definitely get tradition. It'll expand border growth and uh, eventually lead to more growth in our cities. Because growth is the name of the game. <laughs> Granary's almost done. Okay, so that's where the continent ends over there. Nice. So we're kind of on our own over here. It is only four civs in this game, but it is also a smaller map to make up for it. So now we're going to want to build a calendar. Uh, so we can start getting these. These both require calendars. We will get writing at some point here. We'll get archery at some point because you do want to make sure you have modern tech, but we need to make sure we have enough happiness. Uh, we have five right now. You lose four whenever you build a new city. When your population grows, you lose happiness. So we want to make sure that we have enough happiness to found our city or you get substantial growth deficits. Okay, so... I didn't move him one at a time, but that's okay. Okay. He's blocking me off there. Oh, dear. Where am I? Oh, they must be over here. I'm like kind of on an island all by myself over here, separated by this mountain range. Well, I'm going to try and get around these barbs at some point. Choose production. Okay. So now we will go towards our worker. We don't need the shrine because we do have God King passively increasing our faith up towards a religion. Um, we're going to get a worker here um, so that he can work towards improving these things as we uh, will start... We'll, we'll just get another turn on him, and then we'll start building our settler. Next turn. Run him away. Okay, so there's another spot up there, potentially, for settlement. Mm -hmm. So our city has grown in size. Means we're gonna to want to. We got the extra. See, we got the extra things, which took a full turn off the worker production, which is just insane. Okay, so now we're going to want to change production. We're gonna to want to build a settler, and that means that the food doesn't mean anything. So we're just gonna build focus on the ones that have the highest production levels, and they also give us gold. So uh, we get these two. It will be eight turns, but we want to make sure we get to this spot before someone else does. Even though it's a little bit unlikely, but we still don't know exactly what's going on over here. There could, like, the mountain range could end right here, and there could be a guy right here. So we want to make sure we get there as soon as possible. This is especially true in like a player versus player game. Get, being first to the punch is super important because getting your city in the right spot is unbelievably crucial. So yeah, and. Stop chasing me. Honestly, it's not worth fighting him. We're just trying to explore. Yikes. 
Okay, we're gonna just move our guy back to the capital now. We've got a sense of that. We'll send another scout up there at some point. We need someone to escort our settler. Adopt policy. So we, you want to adopt the, these ones down here are the ba way better than um, the border expansion one. Um, like it is nice, but you don't have ten citizens in the city to start with, and like this one means you can get to this one pretty fast, which gives you a monument and then you can get these ones like an extra turn faster. So you want to start with oligarchy. You don't need orders. These guys are getting harried, chased from w by every whim of nature there. Unfortunately, it's going to be hard to sneak past there, but we'll manage. We found a calendar. Perfect. That guy can just be on, like, scout duty, kind of. We'll put him on this hill. Okay, choose research. Now, we can start moving towards, like, the advanced techs, like, archery, to get archers. We can get, like, uh, we can start moving towards more technology. But I generally like getting the uh, pretty standard things going first. Like, you just want to get all these, like, basic researches out so that you can, like, see where horses are, get some horse resources, especially because like you never know if like if there's like a horse tile here it might change our factor. So I think we're going to get animal husbandry next. Also getting pastures can be good and stuff like that. And trade routes is really important for expanding early growth of a city. So I think we're going to get that one for now and then we'll get focus on riding a little bit in a minute. We are in last place, but that is pretty much exclusively because we're just like, that's just how it works in these things. This is why it's not great to build an early settler a lot of the time. I mean, not an early, I mean, an early, um, it's not great to build an early, uh, we did find a way through. See, exactly, this mountain range ended right here. So there could be a sail right here. That's why we need to get going real quick. Ooh, and exploring over here has given me more knowledge about where I want to settle potentially. Like now if I settle here, I get access to citrus, wheat, one, two, no, I do not get access to the banana, but it's just good knowledge to have. If I can get around the mountain range, I can even see what's over on the other side. But if you build an early worker, it's just not, you're going to have to defend it, which is really tricky. Okay, so the worker is just going to stay here. It saves me a gold per turn, and I don't have anything to defend up there, but I want him to be able to escort my worker down there. Jeez. This scout is getting work done. Animal husbandry has been discovered. Let's see if there's any horses. There are horses here. So maybe that makes the settlement, like, here more appealing. <coughs> hmm. Like, not every settlement has to be pure gold. Hmm. Hmm. Now there's trapping, which is really good for these elk camps, but I'm not like at that point yet. So this is, I think, a good time to get riding. So we can start. We'll like get our settler, then we'll get our worker, and then we'll be able to start building a library. And he's just gonna do nothing for now. This guy's still exploring over here. That worker worries. That warrior worries me. So this is a, the, the age-old strat. We're going to move this guy over here. Oh my gosh. See, this is exactly what I described. Oh my gosh, I was spot on. I didn't even mean to. But like his civilization starts out bigger than mine, so like I don't want him to send out a guy to like take my spot. Because he knows this spot exists too, and this is a good spot. It also gives me a little bit of a buffer against him if I build a city like right here in this area, especially with the hills fortifying. Yeah. I think this is the spot I'm going to go for. Because 1, 2, it's in range of this, it's in range of this, it's in range of 1, 2, 3, it's in range of this and the Grand Mesa. Got a huge amount of production potential. And then 
it is not quite in range of these bananas, but we'll see what's down there. Oh no, the barbarian took this guy. That's unfortunate. Oh no, he didn't take the thing. He just forced him to move their guy back, pretty much. Okay, so the only thing we're missing out on here is bananas, which is fine. We're also not on a hill here, but that's okay as well. So the worker is now complete, which means we can change our focus back to the growth, which we definitely want now. Focus on this growth. See, now we have a no four turns until another citizen is born. And just having more citizens is super beneficial, because then you can just work more of these tiles and naturally get more production and stuff. Hmm. So now we choose production. Stonehenge is a nice wonder, but we're not going to go for that right now. We're just going to get this finish up, finish up this worker. I do like Stonehenge though. In like multiplayer games against um, high level CPUs, it's hard to go for these wonders because the CPUs have like a head start on going for them. But uh, we'll just get this worker now. Settler is going to start moving down. Warrior will escort them. You always want to escort the settlers so they can't just be captured by a barbarian. They'll give me a gold per turn to accept embassy. That's generally just something that works out. We can't even do embassies, so we'll just accept that. That's just generally something you accept. Like, he already knows where my stuff is. He sent a scout over there. I'm terrified. Geneva needs my help, but I can't do anything. This is also a decent spot, this grassland hill. I mean, we're not going to go all the way down here, but that's like an interesting spot. I mean, it's not actually that good, but it's got some resources. It's too close to the capital to be actually viable, but I'm just going to move my worker, my guy up here to like, start protecting that. So now we'll move the settler, we'll move this guy. I'm liking the way this game is playing out. We need this worker so we can build onto a happiness thing so that our city will not be unhappy. We're actually going to move this scout back to, uh, oh my gosh, they're conquering it? That's unbelievable. I've never seen that happen. Okay, well now we'll get legalism, which will give us our monument. We're going to send this guy. Hmm. Up there to start protecting. We'll send this guy here. Oh, yeah. We'll just... Bombard them. These guys can move at the same speed, so you never really have to worry about that part. But yeah, we're about to get riding. Right as we're finishing this worker. We killed a barbarian near Geneva, which will help our influence with them, hopefully. Just shoot this guy from our hill. We do want to move the warrior first now. And our worker... It's hard because our worker is in trouble from the perspective that there is a guy right there. So we do have a bunch of gold. So we can buy a scout or we can... I think buying a scout makes the most sense because then we can put the scout on one of these squares while we're building it up. Hmm. Because that scout's going to take a while to get back. Yeah. Yep, and now we can work on building our library. Great library is not really feasible in a game like this. And now we'll start working on... I just want to get archery out of the way, probably. Getting a wheel is really useful. Hmm. Bronze working also comes with a lot of stuff, because getting iron revealed is quite nice as well. Hmm. And tra trapping is going to be really good for my guys. Uh, yeah, let's just get archery out of the way, though. Archery leads to a lot of important things as well. 
This guy can't move that fast, so we can get our guy started while we build our scout to protect him. Our unit was killed. Mecha was grown, so we could just customize where it goes. We'll build on this tile because it does have some food and it gets us a little bit of gold and we're going to be working it anyway because we're building our plantation here. We're just going to have him chill there for a while. So we're going to move our... So we're going to shoot them first. Then we're going to move him here. Crossing the river. Move him there along with him. And yeah, our scout died, but Genova's now. I don't know, they like me a little bit. I don't know. It was. I didn't think they would go back on the assault there. Not gonna lie. But we're gonna start working on our military soon. You just wanna make sure you have a bunch of cities and stuff. And we do know that there are different spots that could be settled. Like we could settle down here. We could settle on the coast. We could settle, like, yeah, there's a lot of spots over here. We probably want some settlement over here, just because there's a lot of space. So this was the spot we had chosen, again, because it's close to this wheat. It's next to a mountain, so we can build an observatory. It was pretty much between these two spots. Um, I guess? Huh. Is this spot actually just better? This spot gives me access to two wheats. So it's one, two, three, wheat, wheat, one, two, three, one, two, three. It is a little bit risky because I would have to I wouldn't be able to immediately work the Grand Mesa, but hmm. this spot seems a little bit better actually. I think this one was like because I saw the bananas and I thought they might be in range. Yeah, let's just build right here. And now that we're gonna get got there, let's just keep exploring with this guy. Oh no, he already shot this turn. Perfect. Archery, perfect. And we have settled. Oh, whoops. I messed that up. Because this guy is still... Four turns away from finishing this off. Whoopsie daisies. Yeah, that was a mistake. Mistakes were made. Oh, man, I was planning it out so methodically. I was, like, playing this game, like, very, very well, in my opinion. And then I made that very... S Great stumble. Like, look at what happens. This is just a gift. Cities grow at one quarter of the speed while the Empire is unhappy. Gold and production is reduced by 2%. So it's not really worth it to focus on growth in times like this. So we'll get rid of that and just focus on that so we can build our stuff a little bit faster. Because growth is reduced by 25%, which means every one of these foods is like one food, essentially. So we're not going to be... Like, like, let's just go back to this. It's 12 turns now. So let's, if we go to this, it's like 60 turns, but we're going to have happiness in like four turns. And in the meantime, we'll be generating a little bit of gold, a little bit of, I guess this one doesn't really matter because we don't care about the gold, but yeah, we're going to definitely switch from two food to two production because production gets hurt a little bit less. We get a 4% production death, like divot and uh, not as heavy in uh, <coughs> the other aspect. I like getting a wheel here because the wheel lets me build a... Uh, Watermill, which is a building that I quite like, and also Chariot Archers, which is a good unit. And I think... I know these guys get Camel Archers at some point, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. But yeah. We don't have anything to clear, really, so let's just focus on getting the wheel. Cheese production. These guys are going to start by building. Uh, one of the things I like to get early on is a granary because then you can trade food across your empire. So they're going to start building a granary. We need to change them to production focus. And then we will... If we could buy a tile, we would buy this triple food tile. But we cannot. They'll just do nothing for now. <coughs> but yeah, this game is going pretty well.
Mm, you generally want to keep a guy around in case you're going to be building a worker. But let's see what's up here. Oh, there's another pass through the mountains. Well, that's terrifying. Or maybe not. Maybe that's just a good sign there. There's a good spot to settle over there. We'll do a tiny bit of exploration. Hmm, we finished the library. We're not going to build a caravan until this thing finishes its granary because we can't do much with the granary until then. So let's just build. In the meantime, we can start working on Stonehenge. Or at this point, it's probably best to start investing in a military. So we'll just get a couple archers. Archers are a really good unit. And they're really easy to make. Ah, we have met another friend. We're going to go around Babylon to try and find what's going on. <coughs> We're going to save up gold so we can buy tiles around here, try to get to the Grand Mesa. Our people are currently unhappy. Oh my goodness, there is a barbarian camper. Oh, I already knew about that camp. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, the scout is hanging out. They're almost done. They're done in two turns. The scout is still going to do nothing. It always just asks me whether or not to do something when the guy is so near. Got a wheel. Ooh, another city state, nice. Scout's just gonna heal up. Archer is going to bombard that guy. Now we can start building a water mill. Now that we've got a, a couple more defenses for our city, we can like start using the archers to defend while we just focus on other things. Again, in a normal game, I'm, I would be tempted by um, the Stonehenge, but it's hard to get these wonders in a game with CPUs. We're going to work towards trapping next. This trapping allows us to um, start developing these deer camps after we've developed these. Yeah, the Great Library was built. No surprise there. Eh, we'll give the archers a chance, because the archers kill them, they get experience. They get experience regardless of whether they kill them, but it's better if they kill them. Okay. Worker is done, so my happiness is up now. So let's just move this guy one square over. And we'll start building even more happiness. Dance of the Aurora. Okay. Unit needs orders. Yeah, they'll just fortify. Keep the guy safe. Keeping our archer in our capital is nice because it gives us a bonus gold every turn. And now that we are happy again, we can shift away back towards food production. Which I guess we never really abandoned, but always good to have access to extra food and this gives us three gold now so we'll definitely want to be working that tile see now it's only two turns till citizen growth before it was like 12 turns or something uh, when we were not even in a great spot I don't know it's just much better this way this guy's gonna finish his granary soon we do now have enough gold to buy this tile so he has now three turns like look at this this is, this is a difference nine turns three turns and after the three turns he can start working this tile in addition to that so definitely worth the gold when you have it always be aware of that asset especially if you have wheat as a option and we're building a granary which will be nice but it'll the granary takes a little bit longer but the, after the three turns it gets much faster because we're just getting more citizens more citizens more citizens C citizens is the most one of the most is pretty much the most important thing early in the game this guy is just our intrepid explorer finding new city cities
Unit needs orders. Let's see what's over here. Melbourne. We found another natural wonder. The Beringer Crater. Wow, that's a really good one. Melbourne wants us to help them defeat the barbarians. Yeah, I'll help you with that, bro. We will pledge to protect you. The, the Behringer Crater is a really good natural wonder because science is really valuable. It's a very good resource to have. Yeah, world's most well-fed people. That's what I like to see. We have good f amount of food. We have trapping, so now our sources of deer over here are going to be quite nice. Ah, oh, we have met the final seven in the game. We are getting closer to finding everyone. Definitely want to use our archer to shoot him, get that XP. We can adopt a policy. Okay, so these are the two that you generally choose between. You usually choose this one if you're struggling with happiness. Um, our capital is decently sized. Um, but then this one is if you're just looking for even more growth and I'm not, you're not struggling with happiness. I think I'm going to start building a um, another settler after I finish this water mill. Um, so the growth one doesn't matter as much to me at the time. And I'm going to care about happiness. So I'm going to just focus on the, that one for now. And let's look at our technology tree. One thing that one of the best technologies for being alongside a river is the civil service. So when you, I'm not like looking at other things, I like to see how which ones get me towards the civil service. That being said, you don't want to ignore these other ones that work towards the composite moment is a real big one. Yeah, you don't want to fall too far behind in that area. Getting to the warriors is super important. But for now, horseback riding should be pretty good. What do I want to build? I don't really need the fish this shipping one right now. I think we're just gonna focus hmm. This is a national epic. Yeah, let's just focus on getting the um uh, towards the civil service. And uh, now let's let's get to composite bowman first, and then like let's get to construction, and then we'll uh, get the other ones because it is really a big deal. Okay, so we now reallocate this worker. He'll work on this one because that one's about to get upgraded anyway. Unit needs orders. Booyah! Helped you out, Belvern. How's that feel? <laughs> we'll eventually expand to include this one and there's not another city to threaten us so we don't have to worry about buying the Grand Mesa just yet yeah they can't conquer my city there's no possible way it's just one unit <laughs> the workers are still building this. They're almost done with it. And now our scout is going to still do nothing. Our archer is going to chill out as well. He's just going to go on alert to save us some time. City of Medina now has two citizens. Make sure we allocate him properly. This is definitely the best square for him to be working. But soon we'll put him on this food square once. Well, let's see. Can we buy any tiles? No, we don't have the gold to buy the tiles yet. Yeah, not not a huge deal. Not a ton going on here. Now that we've finished that, we have a lot of happiness. <coughs> we'll send him over there. Send the scout over to protect him. Ooh, this is the edge of a civilization. Okay, we finished that. So now, I think this is a good time to build another settler. Like... We want to get something down here. We want to get something up here eventually, like in this range with the furs. Probably just as another buffer, like maybe right here. 
Though being on the coast could have some advantages. But yeah, I think then now is a good time to build another settler, which means we're going to go focus solely on production. So we'll get rid of this food one because that's only food. And the other ones are all okay. I mean, it should only t it's only going to take five turns, and then after that we'll be able to start. Let's just accept embassies. Generally, just a good thing to do. You get a little bit more information about what they're up to.
as a bowman, but I think that's not currently where we want to be. <sighs> it's interesting, though. I mean, yeah, I do like upgrading him because then you just have a better army. And if you look at the demographics page, which is a really useful thing to do. Whoa, I'm number one in manufactured goods. I'm actually number one in some categories, which is kind of crazy. I'm number four in soldiers by a decent amount, though, and approval by a decent amount. Literacy. Population is very low compared to where they are. But we're getting there. We're getting there. So, I like. I'm thinking I'm just going to save my gold to try and buy a building eventually. And now, let's just. What do I want, technology wise? Hmm. All right, we're gonna. We already got the construction. So we have access to composite bowmen. How long is this gonna take? We have to get all those things first. Let's just get horseback riding first. Actually, yeah, I like getting the civil service. It just boosts growth tremendously. Theology is a really good one that I like as well, and it kind of goes in a similar path. You have to get the drama and the philosophy for going. And education builds out of that way. Yeah, definitely the way to go. Education is really good. Yeah, we'll just have him be on alert. We don't. I saw some truffles over here. Athens has access to bonus truffles. Oh, it does not have extra. Goodbye. Hmm. They neither like me nor dislike me? I helped them fight the barbarians? Are you kidding me? That's messed up. Okay, they completed Stonehenge. That's why I don't... Yeah, I probably could have got it if I had, like, rushed it, but I had other things I had to get. Oh my gosh. That's messed up, dude. I was helping you fight the barbarians, and this is how you repay me? Am I getting mad? Messed up. Okie doke, da 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 da. Choose production. Don't want the terracotta army. We'll just get a shrine, I think. It's one turn. Gets us double our faith per turn. Which is nice. Oh my gosh, Geneva wrecked me. They took my horses. Oh gosh, that's brutal. That's an ouch. Yeah, that's why you gotta strike fast, as they say. Get down here. Like, imagine if this was another Civ that just, like, settled here first. It gets really brutal really quickly. Hmm. Where is this guy going? He's just gotta go down here, though. There's a lot of potential still for growth, and it can, like, produce units and stuff. Ooh, there's even a worker for me. Nice. Oh man, we found the edge of the world. Barbarians. I think the other person has to be down here. Maybe there's not a coast. Maybe the coast like goes like that. Choose production. Now we can build a caravan. Because we'll be able to trade food with our people. And we're going to just save up gold to maybe try and buy something really nice in our new city. Oh, there's a barbarian camp up there. Yeah, we're not going to fight that. Let's, let's just show you how this works. So you basically you take it. I'm protecting it, yeah. We take it, and then we go make peace. Then you close, and then you move back out. And now you have this thing. But you can't do that. You can only do that once per game, but it's definitely worth it. Um. So how about we build this guy down here? We won't have access to bison. We'll have access to the cattle, though. Hmm. 
Yeah, we don't really want we don't really want to fight them. We're just exploring. Perfect. So now we'll have range. We'll, from here, we'll have range to the cattle. A uh, couple of hills for production purposes. There's bananas. So while we don't have any luxuries, we have enough luxuries with our other stuff to satisfy this. And it's just like a decent city. It's next to a river. And then we'll build our fourth one up here in the mountains, probably. Let's see where she is. Okay, she, has, she is down here, where I suspected. I think this is a good spot to found a city. And then we'll... Production focus. We will buy... Whoa, it wants us to steal this tile from them. No, 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 no. This is the tile for this guy. Yeah, we definitely want that tile for this city, because this city has a lot of stuff to... It wants to get to that eventually. I don't know. I just kind of like that better there. And this one, we will buy the bananas. Oh, no, we'll buy the... Oh, gosh. I think we buy this one, because it gets us a gold every turn. So over the course of a bunch of turns, it'll add up for us. Yeah. Production focus. Yeah. Perfect. And now we just have to send this worker over here. We'll send the worker over here to develop some of their stuff like the citrus. And then we'll just send this guy back. He's going to just start heading back to our spot. I'm upgrading the rough terrain part, but we'll still just shoot him down. Get a nice little upgrade there. Look how synced up this is. We're going to get this guy done. And this is going to be done in how many turns? Three turns? Yeah, that's definitely going to be worth it in the long run. So we're going to... Two turns. Yeah, three turns is fine. Because then we'll start trading food to them. What are we trying to get again? We're trying to get the civil service, so let's just start. Let's just get the drama and poetry. We're almost done with our 50 turns, but and I think this game is going quite well. I like building a granary as the first thing, so we can trade food to them as well. They're going to grow relatively quickly because just all this food. We are making a lot of gold per turn. It's not that bad to settle cities relatively close to each other. Like the desert doesn't really do much for either of the places. It's not really a good spot over here. Yeah. They finish their food. So they make a lot of food over here. Hmm. I just like getting as much food as possible. We're going to buy this tile, I think. So we can start working on that one. That's a pretty good one. You still get the luxury resource even if you don't buy the place. Just as a reference. So let's just send our guys over there now. If you'll notice, I haven't fought the Barbarians really all game. I've just kind of been on an avoidance strategy. Now that the Settler's settled, this guy can go guard the guy over there. If you are going to be building roads to connect the places, you generally want to be building from both sides because the golds cost a lot of money. So we're not going to do that quite yet. We're just going to focus on developing this deer camp currently. 
We'll send him to sit in there and generate some gold. City of Mecca wants gold. I understand. So this guy can get citrus. Adopt policy now that we are no longer... Yeah, now we can just get land of elite. You generally want to finish up all the tenants in your tree. Okay, that was for the embassy. Okay, these guys are going to do nothing for a turn. Actually. Move them to Medina. Because we just want our capital as big as possible. So we will make our capital grow with extra food. I think. Those guys are going to chill in that city. He's going to make some bananas. He's going to guard him while he makes some bananas. Moving over here. Okay. This is where you generally are just like trying to like churn out some like guys to just defend your borders. Because if you look at the armies, like I'm incredibly vulnerable. I have like half the size of the armies, so even though it'd be fine to get like a Colosseum to get some happiness, um, you just start wanting to churn out your composite bowmen at this point. And we have like relatively advanced technology in that area, so we have pretty solid composite bowmening in. Bowming, bowmening. Our religion was founded, okay. trade with Mecca. So we give them four food per turn. There is, if we had a religion, there'd be an incentive to trade with another place because then we can spread our religion pretty fast thanks to our uh, place trait, but we don't really care about gold as much here and we are helping our enemies with the science as well. Um, like here we're giving them two science per turn, they're only giving us one per turn. We're giving them two per turn, they're giving us one per turn. At least I think that that's how the arrows work. Yeah, like I like trading. Oh, trading between your civilization to help growth is like a a really powerful thing to do. Oh no! Oh no! That's why I need bronze working. Well, that's embarrassing. I I really didn't realize this was on a jungle. Well, rough. Tough tootsie pop, as they say. I couldn't clear the thing to build on the citrus. Kind of a little, yeah, mis misstep, shall we say. So now this guy is, this place is getting settled in. I can now just go and produce on this massive food tile and just grow, grow, grow. They're about to grow. They're going to have border growth onto these bananas very soon. But yeah, we are now, I like to get a library as well. Watermill can be strong, but libraries are generally pretty good. The city's pretty small though, so library does lose a bit of luster. Watermill can be nice for growth. Honestly, I'd probably rather have a watermill at this point in the city's lifespan. I am last in people who like shiny things the most. Is that like in terms of like wonder scoring or something? So I can, I'm just going to move him back. There was nothing, not really a purpose to moving him there. He'll just heal. The other guys are building this camp. Damascus has another citizen. 
You get a citizen. You get a citizen. He'll move to the bananas in a moment. Medina has another citizen. He's going to build. Yeah. Getting another citizen a turn earlier versus getting watermill. Four turns earlier. The watermill is definitely important. Because that will give them more growth as well. No, you irritating. Gosh darn it. All right, we need to boom another guy up here to protect it. Yeah, well, shucks. This guy's going to ravage the wheat farm we have built before the composite bowman can get there. Because the barbarians go first. Yeah, irritating. Just one food per turn, but it's annoying to have to send a worker back up there to get it. Now we can construct that. This guy's like finally discovered their capital, which is cool. The warrior is hanging out. And he'll just alert in the city. Choose research, go back to drama and poetry now. Yeah, and uh, this is... 49 turns in. We managed to not really get wrecked by barbarians. We have three cities that are going to be growing very fast, and eventually this one will move over towards more of a production little basis over here with these three hills. There's some iron, which I didn't even see before, which is right in range, which is really useful. And then I think my fourth city would probably be up here after we cleared this barbarian encampment. We have like a little bit of access to fur. Maybe we'd even get it next to this mountain so we could build an observatory, but... Yeah, pretty good stuff. Final turn of the game. We definitely just want to keep this guy hanging out. This guy will chill in the capital. Actually, he'll chill on the wine plantation because if we lose this wine, we're screwed in terms of happiness. Always focus on your happiness at some level. production. Now we do want a Coliseum so we can get that plus two happiness. We are still last in soldiers, but we're catching up a little bit. This guy, they want cotton. Yeah. Pretty solid stuff. That is going to do it for 50 turns of Civ. Hopefully you learned a little bit about something about how it works. We have a pretty good nation right here. Let's look at our demographics. We're number one in crop yield, manufactured goods. So like crop yield and manufactured goods kind of go hand in hand to a certain level because you <coughs> grow and then you get more crop yield. Because uh, like, when you have more crops, you get more people and then you put more people into manufactured goods. So we're kind of one in both of those categories. Our population is relatively low, but that's just because we probably have like one less city and we started off with the worst population by a significant amount. Our GNP is growing. Our land is pretty high. Huh. The population numbers are just kind of irritating because they start with higher capital, like higher capitals. Uh, the way they do difficulties in Civ is they just give the CPUs more stuff to start the game. Our soldiers are low. Approval is relatively low, but we're working on that with our Coliseum. Literacy is catching up for sure. But we're only a couple behind. And yeah, that is going to do it for 50 turns of Civ. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember that if you did enjoy it, be sure to, in the comment section down below, let me know by leaving a hashtag. Um... 50 turns to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video. Let me know if you have any feedback. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you want more content. And I'll talk to you guys in my next video.